Well, housing affordability has not gone away. In fact, COVID appears to have exacerbated that issue right around Australia. For many people around the country, housing is becoming unaffordable. Looking into that has been Jason Malinsky, who is chairing what might be called yet another committee into housing affordability, and he joins me now. But only by cynical people. But that's true, isn't it? We've had countless of these uh, committees over the years. But let, let's get to yours. We don't need okay. to... Uh, you can accept my commentary or dismiss it. That's fine. Sydney, the third least affordable city in the world to buy a house. Yes. Melbourne's the sixth. Yes. Adelaide and Brisbane are the top 20. So yes. houses are too expensive. And by the way, Perth is 23. Not far off. So house, houses are too expensive. It would be better for the economy if and society if they were lower, significantly lower, would you say? I don't think it's about price per se. So we often use the wrong metric. It's about the cost of um, servicing the debt that it takes to buy a house in Australia. But it comes down to the fact that... But that comes down to the price of the house. It does come down to the price of the house. And if Absolutely. anything, interest rates are so low right now... Absolutely. ..they're going to go up. Absolutely. So and, is... and the other bigger issue is this, which is um, which you and I were talking about before which is Australia shouldn't have the most expensive housing in the world. It should have the least expensive housing in the world because we have more land than virtually than every other continent in the world except for the penguins down a lot of the an, South Pole. A lot of land you can't use. But a lot you can use. Mm. I, I don't accept this argument. So this is what all the central planners in the Department of Planning and all the planning academics say, mm. which is, oh, yeah, but our cities are next to the ocean and they've got mountains behind them and, um, you know, there's a lot of land you can't use. And then you keep bringing up examples like, well, when Tokyo undertook planning reform, prices went down, housing became more affordable, okay. homelessness with, went down, with, domestic with violence issue went Sydney, down. With Sydney, domestic, domestic... Where that would grow isn't a big issue, That where that's a sort of a lot of essentially... Um, once upon a time floodplains and we don't want to build... No, there's a very area. small section. I mean, this is the problem here. People keep focusing on the edge cases mm. and not on the actual real cases. So, like, when um, the Grattan Institute came and saw us and said, oh, look, there are all these things that are um, combining to create pricing problems in the housing market. They said, look, tax represents... Federal tax represents between 1% and 4%. See, 50 to 60% of the problem, by the way, is zoning laws. What does everyone focus on? The taxes. Well, we have okay, a social, we'll get, we'll get no, to... No, no, no. We have yeah. a public housing issue where people on lower incomes who will never be able to access the market unless their circumstances change, that's 5% of the market. So we ignore 95% of Australians in pursuit of 5%, 5% every person matters. But we're just ignoring the 800-pound gorilla in the room and the cost of it is becoming unsustainable. OK, well, let's talk about what you're saying are the solutions. So you're pointing the finger at land release... No, supply. It's not oh, about... So no, no. Be, so you say supply, everyone goes, oh, so you just want to um, see our cities grow further and further and further out to nowhere. If, with you, people if you let me on finish, edge land release, mm. density yes. and taxes. Yep. That's, that's what I was trying to say. So okay. are, they, are they the issues in your view? That... They are some of the issues, but ultimately the underlying issue is supply right. and that comes down to zoning laws and that comes which down comes to down fact... partly to density and what... Well, well, well for example, if you look at Sydney, which is the epi epicentre of this crisis, there are a number of issues that the planning laws um, provide, but the biggest inhibitor to affordable housing in Sydney is Clover Moor because Clovermore restricts supply in the CBD where there isn't any complaints about multi-storey uh, multi dwellings, um, where there is plenty of infrastructure. And because she reduces supply there, what's happened in Sydney over the last two decades is you've had apartments in the middle ring and then that um, puts pressure on local communities, on transport systems, gets you a bigger carbon footprint. Like all these people, all these people opposed to increasing supply keep telling me how they're in favour of reducing so, our emissions, but they keep designing cities that specifically create more emissions. So you, you say the issue is clever more and you're not, it means pushes people to the middle ring. Yep. The pandemic at the moment seems to have shown people don't want to be in CBDs right now. No, some people. No, no, some forward? people. So there's been a rebalancing where there are some people who've said, now that I can work from home, I can actually do my job from Coffs Harbour. But doesn't instead, that, yeah, doesn't instead that mean of, sure, instead of Sydney? Sydney. But so guess what's now? To... So guess what's now happened in Coffs Harbour, Tom? There's no more zone land yet left. So the council up there 
has created a situation where not only have they run out of supply, there is no more supply on, on, the, on the horizon for people. Mm. And when there is no more supply, Economics 101 tells you there is only one place for the demand to go, which is in higher prices. But you were saying that's the problem is seen. Clover Moore and now you're saying what it's cost harbour instead. No, it is local governments, generally speaking, but specifically in Sydney, if you're looking in the greater um, Sydney area, Clovermore's refusal to allow people to buy and build dwellings where people want to live and in the types of dwellings they want to live in Sydney uh, uh, has what pushed you're talking the about somewhere When else. someone wants to buy a house, subdivide it and turn one dwelling into three, is that just a classic example of what's not allowed? Is that the best example of what's not no, allowed? No, I'll, I'll give about? you the best example, which was sent to me today by an engineer. Mm. Which said the, the New South Wales planning system is so crazy that if I want to build a water pipe from a house into the sewerage system, I need six approvals. Not once, not, not I can't do get the six approvals at once. I have to get them, um, you know, one by one by one. It can take up to six months. And by the way, the pipe won't change in design, in material, in anything. That is just a microcosm of the problem. We had builders come before the committee who said it is easier in most parts of Australia to get a permit to build a nuclear reactor than it is to build residential housing. We had the Pilbara, like we had we had indigenous communities. We had indigenous that communities. Like, that just seems like hyperbole. We, though. we had oh well, um, you've uh, thank God hyperbole never happens in this studio. We've had um, the indigenous communities from the Pilbara come to us and say some of the taxes and char the state and local government charges on land in the Pilbara where indigenous communities want to buy and build houses actually equals more than what we can sell the houses for. So what's... OK, a couple of things here. State, in terms of these state taxes, what solution are you actually proposing there to do? Are we talking about stamp well, duty? Well, we're not... A, we, well, stamp duty reform will certainly be part of it. And how do you do but, that? Do you, do you get rid of well, it? Well, not the way the tax? ACT government has done it. OK, but what do you do? Do you get rid of it for, for more land tax? How do you replace the revenue? Well, you would replace it with a different form of tax. The one that most economists and most submissions pointed to was land tax. Which means and people, those homeowners are still paying it, it's just over a longer period. So does that make it more affordable instead of 50 grand up front? It makes it more affordable for a number of reasons. The first is that it actually encourages better use of the land we have. So, Tom, what this all comes down to is this. You have so, people so under... Just, yeah, yeah, so just clarifying that, because land tax bills go up, actually you reassess whether you need that big block with a backyard you don't use that much and two properties are on that instead. That's no, 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 not necessarily. So what that, that could be one thing, but what you that's more zoning than tax. What you might end up with is as you go through your life and you get to a point where you're older and your kids have left, um, you say, look, we don't I don't or we don't need to live in a five bedroom house anymore, let's downsize. At the moment, because stamp duty is so inhibitively expensive, mm. people say, well, we want to avoid that transaction cost. Whereas with land tax, they go, well, the transaction cost is not zero, but it's closer to zero. Okay. So you get a better allocation of land. What about. But can I make one other point about stamp quickly, duty before yeah. you move off? Yeah. Which is stamp duty is the thing that drives this problem. Because when house prices go up, um, state governments and local governments profit from that. So the very people who can solve this problem, the underlying problem of supply, actually profit okay. from the problem so, not getting resolved. So what about the taxes that the Commonwealth are responsible for? Investor yep. taxes? So things like capital gains tax concessions, yep. negative gearing, for example. So the Grattan Institute, um, Peter Chulip, the Reserve Bank have all brought evidence forward to say that in some areas these contribute to the increase in prices. So you're prices willing to put them on the table? And we have looked at them and we'll look at those recommendations. What does but that the mean point, though? but the point, if I can finish, mm. the point is that they represent somewhere between one and four percent of the problem. Whereas zoning laws and lack of supply when you say, represent, sorry, when you say represent, one point one to four percent of the problem represent sixty eight percent of the You're of talking the about cost. upfront costs. No, no, no. We're talking about if you remove capital gains tax or the capital gains tax concession from housing in Australia, what would happen to prices overall? They would reduce by somewhere between 1% and 4%. If you reform zoning law on inner city well, apartments... How, how can you be so, so certain about that figure? Well, go and ask the, econometra, the economists who've done the we modeling. We also saw house prices really diverge from... Um, wages in Australia, right at the point the CGT discount came in. Sure, and you saw negative gearing go up. But you want to know when that actually started? 
That actually started in 1985 when planning laws became far more restrictive and they've become more restrictive over time. Mm. And that's when you saw housing prices and the growth in housing prices okay. well, well, Lino, divert from underlying CPA. Can, can, I, so, so can I just ask, though, do you think you're willing to put the federal but what, element... But, but can I ask you a question? Why do we keep talking about capital gains tax and negative gearing, which represent 1% to 4% of the problem, according to the experts in the area, but no-one wants to talk about zoning laws that well, represent no up to 60... About it, but, well, no, no, but, but we have well, spent well, all reason, our time... Yeah, but the and reason I talk to you about tax. it is because you're, you're not... No-one talking, no talking about planning, no-one talking about Your zoning. government's responsible... OK, well, tax. let's talk about um, land and house prices in New South Wales. 50% of the cost of that is state and local government charges. Nothing to do with the federal government. I know, but, but no I'm one asking, ever talks I'm about, about that what's either. In your remit. Okay, sure. I'll, I'll, well, I'll happily. We I'll have had. I'll get someone on we from have the New South Wales government and ask them about. But that. no one ever asks them that. No one asks Andrew Barr why is it that you introduced land tax to get rid of stamp duty, and and now we just have a land tax in the ACC. I'm happy to get on from the New South Wales. And some of the most I've tried a few times to get Andrew Barr on, but he hasn't been available. So has not he? But he lives just down the corner. It's not far, is it? Jason Valinsky, thanks for your time. Thank you, Tom.